JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for November the 16th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all but one of the other major currencies on Monday during the Asian morning Tuesday. It lost some ground only versus uh, the Canadian dollar, while the main losers were the euro and the Swiss franc. Now, the rebound in the US dollar used to be a sign of risk aversion. However, lately signs of an improving US economy have pushed the currency up due to expectations of faster rate hikes, but have also helped equities as investors may have already digested the idea of higher rates soon in the US. That said, this time around, although European indices marched higher, Wall Street closed virtually unchanged. Perhaps this was because investors took uh, the sidelines ahead of today's retail seats. Now, in Asia today, the picture was mixed. Nikkei finished virtually flat, while China Shanghai Composite and South Korea's KOSPI slid. Only Hong Kong's Hang Seng uh, gained uh, decently. Now, as we already noted, today the highlight on the agenda may be the US retail sales for October. We also get the industrial and manufacturing production rates uh, for the same month. Headline sales are forecast to have accelerated to 1.1% month over month from 0.7%, while the core rate is expected to have held steady at 0.8% month over month. Industrial and manufacturing productions are expected to have rebounded 0.7% month over month and 0.8% month over month after sliding 1.3 and 0.7% respectively. Now, in our view, the forecasts point to decent data, to decent numbers, which uh, following last week's acceleration in the US CPIs could increase bets over a, a, over a hike, an interest rate hike by the, Fed, by the Fed as soon as the tapering process is over. Remember that the latest gathering, Fed Chair Powell said that they will stay patient on interest rates, but he did not close the door on the likelihood of an action just after tapering is over. Now, according to the Fed Fund futures, investors are, are already pricing in a 25 basis points hike to be delivered in July next year, and another round of strong US data could add more credence uh, to, the, to their view. This is likely to allow more dollar buying, and even if equities correct somewhat lower, as we already noted, uh, signs of further improvement in, uh, as we already noted, signs of further improvement in, uh, in, the, U in the US economy, uh, could allow uh, for a rebound very soon. Now, flying from the US to the UK tomorrow during the early European session, we have uh, the UK CPIs for October. Yes, we do get the UK employment report for September today, but we believe that pound traders will pay more attention to October CPIs as, uh, as they try to understand how the Bank of England will handle inflation and when the proper time uh, for a hike will be. Now, expectations are for the headline rate to jump to 3.9% from 3.1%, while the core one is expected to rise to 3.1% year-over-year from 2.9%. At its latest meeting, the Bank of England decided not to hike and instead said that this could happen in coming months, despite market participants assigning an 80% chance for such a move ahead of the meeting. Now, last Monday, the pound rebounded strongly following remarks by Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey, who said that they are on a path towards raising interest rates, which may have sparked ex expectations over a, December, uh, over a December interest rate hike. However, on Thursday, the preliminary, last Thursday, the preliminary uh, UK GDP for the third quarter disappointed, slowing by more than expected. 
which may have forced market participants to push back their high expectations, perhaps somewhere in the first months of, uh, of the new year. After all, February is also in the coming months uh, spectrum. Having said all that, though, a strong acceleration in consumer prices, and especially seeing uh, the headline rate jumping to 3.9% at a time where, when uh, the Bank of England's uh, target is only 2%, uh, this will add more credits to Bailey's uh, recent remarks and may revive speculation for a December hike, something that could prove positive for the pound. <coughs> for the pound. However, uh, we will not bet uh, uh, on any pound gains against the US dollar because we expect the US dollar to uh, to stay strong uh, as well. Uh, we could see the pound gaining um, maybe against uh, the Japanese yen or the Swiss franc. Now, uh, passing the ball to the euro, the common currency was the <coughs> excuse me, was the main loser among uh, the majors, and this may have been due to, due to remarks by ECB President Christine Lagarde, who, who pushed back against interest rate uh, hikes, against interest rate hikes once again, saying that tightening monetary policy now to rein in inflation could, sh uh, could choke off uh, the Eurozone's uh, recovery. Remember that uh, she tried to push against hikes at the press conference following the latest ECB decision, but her attempt was unsuccessful. Un unsuccessful. It seems that her patience, eventually, yeah, that her pa uh, that her persistence, excuse me, the patience and persistence, eventually got some participants having second thoughts, and that's why we saw the euro slide. Now, with ACB staying adamant that uh, it is not the time to start raising rates and the Federal Reserve keeping the door open for higher rates as soon as uh, next summer, we believe that this monetary policy divergence will keep the euro dollar uh, currency pair under selling interest. Now, as uh, for the rest of today's events, during uh, the Asian morning, we already got the minutes from uh, of the latest RBA monetary policy meeting. We just confirmed that there will be no rate hikes until wage and inflation criteria are met. What's more, in a speech soon after the minutes were out, Governor Law said that underlying inflation at the midpoint of the RBA's range, which is 2.5%, the range is 2 to 3%, would not warrant a rate rise. Underlying inflation needs to stay well within the 2 to 3% range and make them confident it will stay there, he added. In our view, this enhances the narrative uh, communicated at the latest meeting that interest rates are unlikely to be touched next year, despite market participants um, still betting that we could get uh, several hikes uh, by the end of uh, 2022. Now, later in the day, and ahead of the US retail sales, we get the second estimate of Eurozone's GDP for the third quarter, which is expected to confirm its preliminary print of 2.2%, as well as the bloc's employment change uh, for the quarter, for which no forecast is currently available, though. Now, from the UK, we already mentioned that we get the employment report for September, but we believe that uh, GBP traders will uh, refrain from engaging into large pos positions ahead of uh, tomorrow's CPIs. Now, as for the speakers, we will get to hear from ECB President Christine Lagarde again, as well as from Philadelphia Fed President Patrick Harker, San Francisco Fed President Mari Daly, Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic, and the Richmond Fed President Thomas Barkey. It would be interesting to hear those Fed officials' uh, view on whether interest rates uh, could start rising uh, next summer, especially if retail sales come on, uh, on the strong side. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of uh, the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at uh, 8 o'clock a.m. Uh, GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. At this point, I would like to mention that there will be no daily market review tomorrow, on Thursday and on Friday. So goodbye, have a great day, a great rest of the week, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, next week.
JFT just fair and direct.